Oshkosh Media is government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Hello and welcome to the City Manager's Report. I'm your host, Andy Radig, and I'm joined today by your Assistant City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, Mr. John Fitzpatrick. John, welcome and thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Andy. Okay, uh, glad to have you here. And today we'll be talking about some municipal news items in the first half of the program. And then we'll take a break and we'll come back. And the second half, we'll talk about some agenda highlights from the Wednesday uh, August 12th Common Council meeting and that program that that meeting will be carried live on Gov TV. So John we got a lot of different uh, items to talk about today and it looks like um, uh, an update on the COVID-19 situation. Um, some things have changed since the the last time that we did a program. Uh, there's a governor's order in place at the moment uh, regarding masks. Right, right. There's been a lot of dialogue about um, masking and I know that you know we've had a fair amount of uh, input from the community in regard to masking, and um, I think uh, an overall uh, management of the, the masking issue, you know, at the state level is is a good thing because there's a little more uniformity um, mm -hmm. rather than kind of having a, a patchwork of uh, guidelines. I think it's a little less confusing for the citizenry. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think we're always striving for. Um, so um, it's my understanding that the health department of the county manages the enforcement of the, of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So it's something that, um, you know, we're trying to do our best to uh, um, make sure that we get as much information out to the public about it so they understand, you know, what the requirements are um, and also if they have any issues, how they can contact the health department. Mm -hmm. And we have some resources on the screen. Winnebago County Health Department can be contacted there as well as, as, well as Aurora Healthcare and United Way 211. So uh, resources available for folks. Um, in addition to those, the city of Oshkosh also has a dedicated uh, COVID-19 webpage uh, that you're seeing there with public health updates, uh, city service updates, and some other information uh, pertinent, pertinent to the COVID-19 uh, situation. And uh, so we keep that updated and we receive regular updates from the city departments uh, with regards to the services that they are uh, providing. Uh, one additional service that uh, is available on the website is an online service page, which you're seeing there. So those are all online forms and uh, uh, opportunities to do business with the city online uh, through those links and connections there. So we encourage you to take advantage of, of those uh, resources. And uh, if you need to make payments or drop off absentee ballots, you may also do so. Uh, there is a drop box in front of City Hall at 215 Church Avenue. So we encourage folks to um, take advantage of that. And um, um, if, uh, if you prefer not to uh, enter City Hall uh, and uh, prefer to do uh, business contactless, uh, you are welcome to take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, John, we also have some information from, uh, mainly from Public Works. Uh, the Capital Improvement webpage uh, has been updated and there's some new information that has been posted there. Yeah, I think Public Works um, has done a phenomenal job along with information technology to try to provide a, um, an electronic um, map that indicates what's going on with our Capital Improvement Program what projects are scheduled, when they're scheduled. Um, you can click on some of the features and it looks like we have that up on the screen right now. That's the dashboard. Yeah, you can, you can so sort by year, you can sort by project, um, you can zoom in and look at your area, look at when it's scheduled, get more specific information. So you know, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from the citizens on that. I think they really like you know, having the opportunity to to check this out, 
not only for current projects, but projects that are slated in the future. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. can kind of plan accordingly. So right, right. Yeah, it's, it's a very detailed resource available yeah. for folks. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And in addition to that, uh, normally Public Works does a public informational meeting uh, presentation uh, about their uh, capital improvement budget. Uh, and uh, in lieu of, of a neighborhood meeting this year, they've recorded, along with us here at Oshkosh Media, uh, a, uh, a virtual uh, meeting, uh, as it were. Uh, so that has been posted on the Oshkosh Media uh, website and also uh, available uh, through the um, uh, Public Works website as well. Uh, that program details uh, the 2021 budget and some of the things that are coming up there. Uh, it's very detailed, has a lot of information, and we encourage folks to go and uh, check out that video. Right, and I don't want to steal any thunder away from you, Andy, because I know we're going to be talking about this in the second half of the meeting, but you know, this is just another example of providing different uh, venues for people to access information and communicate with the city, um, especially now when you know, uh, there are a variety of different circumstances that might prevent someone from being able to speak to us in person or gather information in person. So right. I think this was really a, an excellent project and I think you know, the uh, ability for us to further provide information about it through um, Oshkosh Media you mm -hmm. know, is just one step further. So mm -hmm. Very good. And we encourage folks to, uh, to check out that, uh, that program. We have some other updates. The Parks Department has been very busy this summer. Right. And uh, they've made some, some very nice improvements. Uh, we were over at the uh, Bowen Street Fishing Dock the other day and uh, had some video of, of uh, their improvements there. They, they have all new composite decking that you yes. can see there. Right. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's very nice, very nice. So that was one of their improvements. It is really nice. And I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think you know our partners, Otter Street Fishing Club, you know, we're instrumental in helping to uh, defray some of the costs for that. And also, uh, I don't think people realize that Battle on Bagel, the organizers for that event, um, are really heavily involved in supporting the community and supporting fishing for, you know, all kinds of different folks. Um, Otter Street has been a partner for many, many years. I know that, you know, they were responsible for establishing the, um, the fishing uh, pier at Menominee Park mm -hmm. um, for um, folks who have disabilities. Right. It was kind of a unique structure. Mm -hmm. um, so they're always very thoughtful. They're always trying to help the community, as, is, as are the folks from Battle on Dagon. It's certainly appreciated. Mm -hmm. And folks can also be uh, watching for a, uh, an Oshkosh Today segment coming up on Oshkosh Media that dives in a little bit deeper on that, uh, on the, on the um, Bowen Street Fishing Pier, so you can be watching for that. Uh, Menominee Park uh, has some updates too. There's some new exercise equipment over there. Right. And uh, so that's kind of a new thing for folks to be able right. to take advantage Spe of. Speaking of Menominee Park, yeah, there, mm -hmm. there is some new exercise equipment there. And um, it's something that was done in conjunction with uh, our neighborhood association in that area. Mm -hmm. We talked to some of the folks that um, live there and have expressed interest in you know, how Menominee Park can be improved. And there was some interest in establishing some exercise equipment. I think there's some that's right across from Bella Vista. That's right. So I think, you and know. And we're seeing some of it right okay, now. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, there's some stuff that I think is just unique to some of the residents can use some of that equipment there. And, and then I believe there's also some over by the new little Oshkosh playground equipment. That's so, right. Mm -hmm. um, it really is a beautiful park. I don't know if people realize, you know, a park of that size, 109 acres, mm -hmm. you know, the, the water venue, the zoo, the um, sports uh, uh, fields, and just the, just the walking and biking paths there, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Yeah. It, it really is. And, and I mm -hmm. think uh, people can take their time and uh, there's a lot to see and a lot to do there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uniquely Oshkosh. It's one of those special gems that we have in the city. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, Andy. Mm -hmm. And then there have been some other improvements as well in some other areas. Uh, there's a tot lot uh, play equipment over at uh, uh, Congress uh, Avenue. Uh, Tech Miller Park has seen a update to its uh, batting cage. And uh, Roosh Park has received three new memorial benches over there. 
and also uh, the Lakeshore Park pro project continues its progress as well. Right, it's so. it's in progress. It's underway. I think people might be familiar with uh, you know the uh, changes that took place there, and um, the expansion of the river walk in that area, mm -hmm. and the conversion of the golf course to um, a, a park that is. Um, you know, more publicly accessible. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something that's going to be exciting to see that unfold. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing the progress on that one. Yeah. Uh, another area, too, in the city is uh, transit, and Go Transit has enjoyed uh, a, a good positive uh, performance review, and uh, it turns out that they are performing better than most of their peers uh, really around the country. Right, it's my understanding that, you know, they are reviewed regularly um, from FTA and also a variety of other um, assessment um, mm -hmm. areas and, and they do do a, a great job. I think um, we have many, many compliments from folks about our, our transit operators. Um, you know, they're kind of ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Especially because we have so many visitors that come to Oshkosh and, sure. you know, their friendliness, their willingness to try to help others. I think that's something that's, that's kind of a hallmark of their, mm -hmm. of their service and, and we're very proud of them and the, and the work that they do. But mm -hmm. you're right, um, fares are still the lowest in the state um, and uh, I know that um, they're going to work toward upgrading the downtown transit center. And, right. uh, they're also working on all kinds of different technological advances. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah, they have some goals to work on there, but it's very a very very positive report. So yeah, so good to hear. It's nice to have a, a great uh, transit system in our own community here. Uh, another item that is coming around that is kind of uh, very busy right now across the hallway here in City Hall is the City Clerk's Office, yep. and they're very very busy with um, uh, early voting and absentee ballots. So I know that uh, early voting is currently underway uh, in, in City Hall, and um, I, I believe that at this point it is too late to request a absentee ballot, but folks that have them are asked to get those turned in. Right, and that's um, actually one of the reasons why the council meeting we're going to be talking about after the break uh, was moved. Mm -hmm. um, it was originally scheduled for that Tuesday, August 11th, but... That's right. Because that's a, a voting day, um, then the, the meeting is um, moved to the very next day. Mm -hmm. So that's what's taking place there. And yeah, um, I think uh, it's my understanding that we're having great participation. So, you know, as we talked about earlier, um, we want to provide options for people to participate. Uh, and this is in their government, and this is another example of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, folks must uh, return those ballots by 4.30 p.m. on Election Day, which is Tuesday, August 11th. And their, their absentee ballots may be returned to the drop box in front of City Hall uh, or may be returned uh, in person to the uh, City Clerk's Office in City Hall. And again, the deadline for those absentee ballots is 4.30 p.m. On, on Tuesday, August 11th. Uh, if you need more information about uh, finding your polling place uh, or more information about the election in general, you may find that on the city's website uh, under the elections tab. So we encourage you to learn more information there. So John, I think that's about what we have uh, for our uh, updates on things at this point. So what we'll do at this moment is take a short break and we'll be back with some agenda highlights from the Wednesday, August 12th Common Council meeting, and we'll be right back. We've always been interconnected, interdependent, united, and that's never been more apparent than right now. What we do together today will determine how we live united tomorrow. Stay home, stay strong, and if you're able, give for your neighbors who need help the most. The American Red Cross urgently needs blood and platelet donations 
and asks all healthy donors to schedule an appointment to give now. With the coronavirus outbreak, it is important to maintain a sufficient blood supply. Your blood donation is critical and can help save lives. Please schedule an appointment today. Download the blood donor app, visit redcrossblood.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. You can make a difference. And welcome back to the City Manager's Report. I'm your host, Andy Radig, joined today by your Assistant City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, John Fitzpatrick. John, welcome back. Thanks, Andy. And right now we're, we'll take a look at some agenda highlights for the upcoming council meeting that is on a Wednesday this time, on Wednesday, August 12th at 6 p.m. And John, uh, the first item that we're looking at is actually kind of a change to council meetings. Uh, it's it's uh, opening up uh, citizen participation in a new way that hasn't been available in the past, uh, virtual participation. It is, and you know, um, I know Andy, you know, and, and we've worked together for quite some time in Oshkosh Media, and one of the um, important tenants to uh, the success of Oshkosh Media and our organization is to try to provide as many opportunities for people to participate in their in their government. You know, we want to have full active participation. Mm -hmm. That's how we can make Oshkosh the best it can be. And that's why we go to great lengths to televise things on GovTV, Life TV. Mm -hmm. You know, it's accessible on so many different platforms with Apple TV now, Roku, Spectrum, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 101.9 FM. I remember that I think you were instrumental in getting a license for that low power FM that was station. a major project, that's right. But you know, it really helped us with some of our, our emergency management circumstances. And, and you know, the point of all this is to just try to give people different opportunities to try to access their government and participate. And mm -hmm. um, especially now with some of the circumstances associated with COVID, you know, there are people that, you know, may not be able to come to the meeting or um, you know, have different circumstances with family members they need to take care of, or, mm -hmm. you know, if they um, have some compromised health conditions, they may not feel comfortable coming to the meeting on, in person. So, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to uh, deprive anybody the opportunity to, for them to express themselves. So mm -hmm. this is just another initiative that we're going to try to do our best to mm -hmm. uh, convey to the public, whereby they can... Um, participate virtually. We're going to start out with a council meeting mm -hmm. um, this next Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, but then the hope is that we can expand it to boards and commissions also. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to talk about how it's going to work or Certainly. if you'd like, we can, sure. I guess, cover it together. Sure. Well, just a, a, brief, a brief rundown on it is that um, folks are still required to register to speak. So uh, in the past, uh, people have always registered to speak before, before uh, uh, appearing at the meeting. So even if you're appearing virtually, you must still register to speak to start with. Uh, the meeting agenda is an important uh, item for you because it has the information contained on it, uh, how to link to the meeting virtually. And um, so it, it will have a, a web address uh, that you can use to contact. And once you are in, well, and you can alternatively, you can call into the meeting. And that phone number is also provided for you on the Common Council agenda at the very top of the agenda. So that is available there. Uh, uh, if you are... Uh, as long as you have a touchdown phone or a mobile phone. Okay, there you go. And uh, so once you are connected up, uh, you will be able to, uh, to hear the meeting and uh, when it is your time to speak, uh, the uh, city staff, city clerk's office will, uh, somebody at the meeting will be able to uh, tell you once it is your time uh, to speak. And we ask that you unmute yourself so that you can be heard and uh, you can make your public comment at that time. And then we're also asking that you mute yourself after you're done. Right. Because we've known in this era now of, um, mm -hmm 
virtual participation, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the background, especially right. at my house. <laughs> it's a noisy place, so. And there um, can be dogs barking. Yes. There can be whatever else Especially going at on. my house, yeah, yeah. right, That'd exactly. Be the first time we heard dogs barking at a council meeting, I think, so <laughs> we'd we'll so, like to avoid that. Right, and, and you know, it's a courtesy for the other people that are speaking, too. Sometimes the, the signal becomes uh, degra degradated a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if we have too many people that are open, right. too, so right. so we don't right. want that um, to be uh, degraded. Right, right. And we did want to remind folks also that uh, if if they just want to uh, observe the meeting, uh, watch or listen to it, they do not need to uh, uh, go through this process of of joining virtually. Uh, they may use any of the means that are up on the screen there to uh, to listen into the meeting if they do not wish to comment. Right, I think that's an important thing because we want to try to keep those keep as much space open for those folks that do want to participate virtually. Right, right. So we encourage folks to participate in any of the ways that are available, whether it be virtually or. Uh, just by observing through Oshkosh Media, and uh, and uh, I think people are very familiar with with those. But you see them on the screen there, different ways that folks can can uh, take advantage of of uh, listening in on the meeting. Right. And so that leads into uh, a new method of uh, public comment uh, that public comments will be taken at the beginning of the meeting. Exactly. Yes. I mean, in order to facilitate this, because you know there very well could be you know, 100 people that might want to speak at a meeting if it's a controversial topic, a spirited discussion. So for us to try to match those individuals with each individual topic in the virtual world would be very difficult and cumbersome, not only for us to um, facilitate, but also to convey when we're trying to transmit this um, as, a, as a media product. Mm -hmm. So this is one change um, that uh, the public is going to have to get used to, at least for this time being, and that is all of the, our public comment is going to be combined into one section, and that's going to be done right at the beginning of the meeting. Mm -hmm. And that's our first example of that is going to be at this August 12th meeting. So, right, right. So, so to explain a little bit further, rather than having the opportunity to talk about a subject that's going to come on later at the meeting, mm -hmm. When your name is called, you'll have to talk about the subject that you're interested in speaking on at that initial um, period. Mm -hmm. Right. So right. I think it's not ideal. I think we like the way that it was done before, mm -hmm. but I think there's going to be trade-offs in order to try to facilitate this right. um, to, to the best of everyone's ability, and that's, that's the reason why. Well, and it should allow the meeting to go more efficiently. And for the folks that are participating virtually, it should help to minimize their time that they have to wait. Absolutely, so, I think that's yeah. a big issue. And I know you and I have been at meetings, you know, many, many times where someone wants to speak in a subject and they have to wait for hours. So I mm -hmm. think it, it's a little more respectful of their time. Um, and they just are gonna have to make their point among other points that are being made, being made for their for other subjects, and mm -hmm. I, I think um, I'm confident that our citizens can do that. Okay, very good. And John, changing gears a little bit here, um, we have some tree uh, updates in the city, uh, tree diversification, and uh, I understand that um, we're looking at some various neighborhoods that will see some new trees planted. We are. Um, we are um, going to be working on a project. Um, it's awarding a bid to a to a service to help coordinate our neighborhood tree diversification program. And that's managed by parks, our, our, um, our arborists manage that program. And it's really um, us, it's the Oshkosh Community Foundation taking root um, fund that we're gonna be utilizing. Um, it's really designed to help us uh, strengthen our urban forest. Mm -hmm. I, I know that people like the aesthetic component of the urban forest. Um, but there really are some very practical uh, um, applications related to uh, some of the other more uh, literally concrete uh, areas mm -hmm. of you know our city infrastructure. For example, when you have a an urban forest, it it helps preserve the roadways 
um, believe it or not, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a proven fact. So, mm -hmm. in addition to beautifying our city, it really is a practical consideration, and we're fortunate that we're able to um, beef up our urban forest a little bit with this initiative. Mm -hmm. And there are some neighborhoods where this will be taking place. The Congress Field uh, Neighborhood Association is one of them. Right. And uh, I know that uh, you know it's specific to uh, some of these neighborhoods also. Sawyer the Payne. The Sawyer Payne. Right. So. Mm -hmm. No, I think it'll be nice. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and and uh, we'll be looking forward to, to that for sure. Uh, we have another item, another partnership actually uh, relating to tourism. Yes, um, that's an initiative that we're going to be uh, working on um, in regard to uh, seeking a grant for tur tourism resiliency and diversification. Mm -hmm. And um, a, w a ways back, you know, I was on the committee that helped develop the brand. Um, Oshkosh, Wisconsin's Event City. Event City. Mm -hmm. And um, when that's undertaken, uh, the folks that provide facilitation for that kind of an initiative talk about revisiting your brand on a periodic basis to see if it's still relevant, if, if it's fresh, right. to make sure it's still um, the identity of the city. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a, a way for us to partner with the CVB mm -hmm. and take a look at um, branding and um, I think it's my understanding that um, the total cost of this program is could be about three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So we're fortunate that uh, we're hopeful that we're going to be able to get this grant that'll help defray some of that cost, and then also fund a person to help be a um, concierge facilitator associated with some of the initiatives that are going to take place with this. So, mm -hmm. so we'll see. We're, we got fingers crossed. So mm -hmm. hopefully, it's something that'll we'll be able to realize. Well, branding is important, especially as it relates to tourism. So yeah. this is an important item, right? For sure. And then another, a couple items that are coming up on the agenda too relate to some new, uh, some new businesses and um, getting them uh, uh, set up and into place. Right, right. Um, and this is in the the area of um, Oshkosh Avenue, mm -hmm. where there's some uh, development that's occurring by the Oshkosh Corporation um, Center and. Um, and I think people are excited. I, you know, I, I'm excited. I don't know if my wife is as excited as I am, <laughs> because she's trying to um, get me to stay on my diet. But it sounds like Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins are going to uh, be that might be challenging. Are going to be in that area, <laughs> and you know that's that's great for me. But um, it, it will be a challenge because it, um, I think it's something that the citizens will enjoy patronizing. Okay. okay. And uh, we have some, some other uh, uh, council workshops coming up. Uh, there's a uh, second budget workshop coming up on August 19th at 5 p.m. And then there's a special council meeting uh, on August 24th being held at the convention center. Right. Um, the, uh, the second budget workshop is really going to talk about um, some of the major cost drivers to the operating budget. Mm -hmm. That could be wages, benefits, those sorts of things. I think we're also going to have a report of our audit, our, our CAFR, so we're going to take a look at that. So I, I know a little bit about that one because I'll be um, pretty heavily involved in that one. Um, and then the second thing that you mentioned, a special meeting at the uh, um, convention center. This is another initiative for us to try to be considerate of everyone and their ability to um, feel safe. So. Mm -hmm. Um, typically, when we have a, a special assessment, we have a lot of people that attend. Okay. And we just thought it might be a good idea for us to space it out a little bit. People feel comfortable. If they feel comfortable, then they can come mm -hmm. um, and talk and uh, ask questions, and, and that's what we want. We want to mm -hmm. provide that opportunity for them. So, yeah, it's going to be the 24th at the convention center. Public Works is going to meet with citizens and try to answer their questions. So, mm -hmm. Okay. John, I think that's about all the time that we have today. Uh, we went through a lot of material, so uh, thank you very much again for joining us today and, and for, for jumping in for Mark here. No problem. Thanks for having me, Andy. You bet. You bet. And again, the Common Council meeting will be coming up on Wednesday, August 12th at 6 p.m., and that meeting will be carried live on GovTV, which is Spectrum Channel 10, UVerse Channel 99, and streaming on YouTube and OshkoshMedia.org. Uh, you can also listen to it on the radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9, 
which is also online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Uh, so thanks again for watching the City Manager's Report, and we'll be back again in two weeks with another new program. Uh, take care, everyone.